What's up my piano friends? It's your boy Zach Evans back at it again with another piano tutorial. Today I'm gonna teach you the top six chord progressions every single beginner piano player should know. We got the catchy, the emotional, the road trip, the evil, the somber, and the sinister. These are super, super common. You hear them all the time in pop, rock, and jazz music. It's almost like having an entire toolbox of chord progressions right at your fingertips. And what's even better, I used a little bit of music theory to simplify these so it's so easy I could teach them to a freaking rock. Just kidding, but seriously, if you can follow simple instructions on a basic cheat sheet, you can absolutely learn these chord progressions. All right, I'm excited, I'm ready to go. Let's get started. All right, so before I went and recorded this video, I literally went on YouTube and looked up all the other beginner chord progression videos. It took all the best parts of each video and made sure I incorporated all of those into this video so you don't have to watch any other chord progression videos. You're gonna be good after this. And I was kind of disappointed because half the videos would say for beginners and then they would teach something like this. In what world is that for beginners? But don't worry, in this video, I made it super, super, super easy and simplified for you. So you can avoid all the frustration and learn it a lot faster. So to make these chord progressions super easy to learn, there's actually a four step process to follow. Step one, I'm gonna show you the exact notes and chords to play right on the keyboard. This is where most videos stop and they don't teach you anything else. Step two, I'm gonna teach you the actual process to learning them. So what do you actually do when you sit down at the piano and practice? And this is gonna make sure you drill them in correctly so you can easily get hands together coordination and you can speed it up without it getting sloppy. This part is super important, so I want you to promise me that you will 100% stick around all the way to the end of the video and not get distracted by cat videos. <coughs> deal? All right, deal, we're good. Step number three is called chord stacking. Trust me, you're gonna absolutely love this. This is where we literally take one chord progression, and we use a little bit of easy music theory to literally multiply it out into six separate chord progressions with zero extra effort on your part. And step four is money patterns. This is where I show you simple rhythms and variations to spice up the chord progressions and really bring them to life. This is everybody's favorite part of the lesson. Yeah! Let's get started. All right, here's a quick demo of exactly what the first chord progression, the catchy, is gonna sound like. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. It's gonna sound like this. Now you probably heard this chord progression before. It's literally used in like a billion songs. All right, so to learn this progression, we're gonna start with both our thumbs on C. Now if you don't know where C is, just find the two black notes, go one to the left, and this is the note C. And for this progression, our fingers are always gonna stay on the corresponding notes. So your hands stay at home right here. You're not moving your hands all the way on the keyboard. You're not spreading your fingers or anything like this. It's just these notes right here that we're gonna be using. So the first chord we're gonna play is a C major chord. So we got a C in our left hand and a C and an E in our right hand. Chord number two, we got a G major chord. So we got a G in our left hand and then we got a C and a D in our right hand. Now technically this is a G sus four chord, but by making this modification, it makes it easier for you and it actually sounds uh, better in the whole progression. All right, the third chord we got is an A minor chord. So we got an A in our left hand, and we got a C and an E in our right hand. And the final chord we got is an F major chord. So we got an F in our left hand and an C and an F in our right hand. So fully fleshed out, it's gonna look like this. C, G, A minor, F. All right, before we go on, you're definitely gonna wanna download the ultimate cheat sheet for this lesson. It's gonna make everything way, way, way easier for you. So click the link, put in your name and email, and click here to download Do -do 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 -do! the ultimate cheat sheet. Wow. <laughs> Just kidding, but for real, go download the cheat sheet. It literally has everything on it, all the chords you have to play, the exact notes, and the exact fingerings to use. So pause the video now, go download the cheat sheet, and I'll see you in three seconds. I'm gonna 
show you a three-step process to drill this deep into your muscle memory. And if you learn it correctly the right way, you'll see how we can turn this one chord progression into six chord progressions with zero extra effort on your part, but you have to learn it correctly. All right, first we're gonna do chunking on the right hand. Now chunking is simply where we break up a section into smaller chunks and then put them back together for one big chunk. So chunk number one is gonna be the first two chords, C to G, and chunk number two is gonna be the last two chords, uh, A minor to F. So all we're gonna do is take this first chunk and practice it over and over. So we're literally just gonna alternate between C to G to C to G over and over again. Pause the video and do that until you have it kind of in your memory. All right, now the next step, we're gonna take the next two chords. So we're gonna go A minor to F. We're gonna drill this in over and over and over until it's deep into your muscle memory. Once you got that, now we're gonna put them both together and we're gonna go C to G to A minor to F. And we're simply gonna repeat this over and over. Now a couple things that make this a little bit easier for you. One thing you can notice is your thumb plays the C on every single note, right? So no matter what we're playing, your thumb is always just playing a C, so you don't really have to worry about it. Just play a C every time. The other thing you'll notice is you can imagine that you chopped off your pinky because we literally never use our pinky during the, any of these chord progressions. So you can imagine that this doesn't exist for a moment and just use these four. All right, so now you should have the right hand down pat. But before we go on to the left hand, I really wanna make sure that I'm not leaving anybody behind. So what I want you to do right now is go down in the comments and leave one of two comments. Either say, Zach, I got it, this is awesome, great, we can move on. Or say, Zach, I don't get it. Here's exactly what I don't get and the specific reason that I don't get it. And that way I can go in the comments and help you out later if you need help on this part. Plus studies show the more you engage with the video, even if it's simply leaving a comment, the more your brain will actually retain the information. So it's kind of a win-win. All right, pause the video and leave a comment now. All right, next step in the process, we're gonna use the rhythms technique to learn the left hand and drill it so far into our muscle memory that it goes on autopilot. That way you won't even have to think about it and it'll just be happening automatically while you can focus on your right hand. All right, so here's how it works. The left hand is simply gonna play C, G, A minor, and then F. And it simply repeats these four notes throughout the entire progression. So for the rhythms technique, step one, we're gonna simply play it like normal four times, all right? So you go C, G, A minor, F. That's one, okay? I want you to pause the video and repeat that four times. All right, the next step, we're gonna use rhythm number one, which is long, short, long, short. So now we're gonna play the exact same notes four times using the rhythm, long, short, long, Short, long, short, long, short. All right, so pause the video, do that four times. And the next step, we're gonna play the pattern again four times using rhythm number two, which is short, long, short, long. Sounds like this. Short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Pause the video, do it four times. All right, step three, we're gonna repeat the pattern again using rhythm number three, which is long, short, short, short. So it gets a little more tricky. It's gonna sound like this. Long, short, 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 long, short, short, short. Repeat that four times. All right, next we're gonna use pattern number four, and we're gonna do it four times again with the pattern short, 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 long. It's gonna sound like this. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. All right, pause the video, repeat that four times. All right, in the final step, we're gonna go right back to normal, and we're gonna play the pattern four more times with no rhythm, just straight, uh, straight quarter notes. And finish off with that four times, and now we've completed the rhythm strategy. By the way, all these strategies are laid out on the cheat sheet on the last page. So if you haven't gone and downloaded the cheat sheet, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
Just kidding, but seriously, go download it because it's important. All right, on to the final step of the process, getting hands together using the added note strategy. All right, so the added note strategy is very simple. We start out with a very, very, very small section and then we gradually add more and more so it's not going to overwhelm you. All right, so we're gonna start with just the first two chords getting hands together, right? So we're gonna go from C to G. And then we're gonna stop and we're gonna reset and we're gonna do that again. C to G. Now you'll notice this moves in parallel motion, meaning your hands move the same direction. So your third finger is gonna go down to the second and your thumb is gonna go down to the G and this thumb stays the same. So, and then they both go down. You wanna practice just this until you have it under your belt. All right, now the next step is we're gonna simply add the next chord to the progression. So we're gonna start off just like normal, our C to our G, and now we're gonna play our A minor. And then we're gonna stop and we're gonna reset. And we're gonna do the same thing. C, G, A minor. And you notice from G to A minor, it's pretty easy because again, it moves in parallel motion. So our G moves up one note to an A, and our D moves up one note to an E. So they kind of both just move up one note from G to A minor. So again, the whole thing looks like this. C, G, A minor. All right, practice that till you kind of have it in your bones. And then next step, we're gonna simply add the last chord. Now by this time, you should have the first three chords pretty good, so it shouldn't be a huge deal to add the fourth chord in. So again, we start from the beginning, C, and then G, and then A minor, and now we're gonna go to our F chord here. So this is the hardest one because our hands move in contrary motion. In other words, they move in opposite directions. Your left hand moves down, your right hand moves up. So your right hand moves from this E up to this F, and your left hand moves from this A down to this F. So in all, the last two chords look like this, A minor, and then to the F. All right, so the full chord progression looks like this. C, G, A minor, F. And before we go into chord stacking, I want you to realize something. All these strategies we're using, right? Chunking, rhythm, add a note. You don't have to just use these for this lesson. You can use these for everything. Scales, finger exercises, tricky parts of the song you're working on. Because I want you to realize that by learning this lesson, you're not just memorizing six random chord progressions. You're also learning an entire conceptual framework on piano of how to use strategies and techniques to learn things faster and drill them in deeper to your muscle memory. That way I can build you up as an entire piano player and not just someone who's good at copying Zach's lessons on YouTube. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Make sure you use these strategies on anything you're learning in the future. All right, on to the third and most interesting step, chord stacking, baby. Awesome. Yes! All right, this is where it starts to get kind of fun. This is where we literally take this one chord progression that we just learned. I'm gonna show you how you can stack it in different orders to create six different chord progressions with zero extra practice on your part. Let me show you what I mean by this. All right, I call this chord progression the emotional chord progression because it's so often used in love songs, especially like sad breakup songs. And here's what it's gonna sound like once we add a money pattern to it. More about money patterns later. Makes you want to cry, right? But the best part about this is this is literally the exact same chord progression as the catchy chord progression. We simply start on a different chord. We start on our A minor instead of our C and we play the exact same chords in the exact same order, but we're simply stacking the A minor and the F on top of the C and the G. So fully fleshed out, it's gonna sound like this. A minor, F, C, G. All right, so now we got two chord progressions. If you need a refresher on that, just go to the cheat sheet for the chords. On to chord progression number three, the road trip. All right, I call this one the road trip because it literally sounds like something that you and your buddies would listen to as you're going on a road trip together. It's very fun, it's very playful, sounds like this. And guess what? Yes, this is literally the exact same chord progression as the catchy, the first one that we learned. The only difference is we start on our F chord. 
right? So instead of Arkechi, which is C, G, A minor, F, same exact chord, same exact order, but we start on F and we go F, C, G, A minor, right? I'm gonna do it one more time. F, C, G, A minor. Exact same chords, exact same order. So now we should have three chord progressions under our belt. All right, next up we got chord progressions four, five, and six. The evil, the somber, and the sinister. I call these the... The dark side. Because <laughs> they sound kind of like dark and evil and twisted. Anyway, you'll see exactly what I mean. All right, so these next three chord progressions are kind of like the mirror progressions to the first one. They're kind of like the dark side to the light side of the force for all these chord progressions. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our exact same first three chord progressions and shift them down two notes. So instead of our thumbs on C, we're going to go one, two, and our thumbs are going to be on A right here. And we're going to play the exact same fingers except just down on this A and it's gonna sound great. So first dark side chord progression is called the evil. All right, so for this chord progression, remember our catchy chord progression. Let's just show you the right hand, right? It goes like this. Now if we take that exact same pattern, move it down to the A, it's gonna sound like this. Same thing with our left hand. Our left hand goes like this for the catchy. We simply shift our hand down to this A, sounds like this. So when I play both hands together, it's gonna sound like this. Doesn't that just sound evil and twisted? And best of all, you already have it learned. You play the exact same chord progression as the catchy, just shift it down two notes. If you wanna know the exact chords you're actually playing, just go to the cheat sheet, it's all right there for you. All right, so on to chord progression number five, the somber. All right, so the somber is the counterpoint to the emotional chord progression. So remember the emotional chord progression went like this. So we're gonna take the exact same fingerings, shift it down two, and it's gonna sound like this. If we put a little money pattern in there, it's gonna sound like this. I love this sound, it's just so brooding and dark and deep. So that's chord progression number five. Remember, if you wanna know the chords, just go to the cheat sheet. All right, so the sixth and final chord progression is this sinister chord progression. This is the mirror chord progression to the car ride. So if you remember, the car ride sounded like this. We're gonna take those exact same fingers, move them down to this A, it's gonna sound like this. With the money pattern, it's gonna sound like this. So it's a very kind of sinister, cool, dark sound to it. So that, there you have it, chord progression number six. Remember, if you learn the first one, you pretty much automatically already learn the other ones. And now onto a bonus chord stacking. We call this octave transposition. Now octave stacking, we're gonna take these six progressions we just learned, and we're gonna literally transform it into like 50 different variations with, you guessed it, zero extra practice on your part. So the concept is pretty simple. We can take any of the chord progressions we just learned, and we can play it with our thumbs on any C on the entire keyboard. So this C, this C, this C. You can't see them up here, but you can play them on any C or any A. Right, so I could take my catchy chord progression, and I could take it on this C, or this C, or maybe move my left hand up. And same with any of these progressions, right? We can take some of our dark progressions. We can play them on any A on the entire keyboard. And no matter what, it's always gonna sound good. So that way when you're using these chord progressions in real life, you'll have some variation, you'll have some ways to kind of make them different without really having to practice them anymore. So now you just learned one chord progression, you multiplied it into six, and you just multiplied it into like 50 variations. If that's not the closest thing to magic that we have, then I don't know what is. 
And now on to the fourth and most exciting step, money patterns, baby. All right, so rhythmic patterns is simply playing the exact same notes we just learned in different rhythms to spice them up and make them sound more interesting. And what I call money patterns are my favorite rhythmic patterns that I use over and over again because they just sound freaking awesome. So today I'm gonna show you my top three money patterns for these chord progressions. We got the four on the floor, we got the car ride, and we got the greatest showman's money rhythm. All right, on to the first one, four on the floor. Now the four on the floor is the simplest money pattern, but honestly it sounds great and I use it all the time. So here's how it works. Let's take our catchy chord progression, these notes. We're gonna play the exact same notes just with a different rhythm. And for this rhythm, we're simply gonna play our right hand four times for every one time in our left hand. So it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, then switch. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, last chord, one, two, three, four. And once you speed it up, it's gonna sound like this. This is super common, it's very, very versatile. You can use it all the time. All right, on to money pattern number two, the car ride. All right, this money pattern is very fun and high energy, great for parties. Here's what it's gonna sound like. Now this looks really hard, but it really isn't that challenging. It's just people get really tricked up about the rhythm. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna practice the rhythm first without the melody to drill that into your head, and then we can add the melody slowly but surely. All right, so first things first, I want you to repeat this with me. Both, left, right, left, right, both, left, right, left, right, all right, and I want you to literally say it out loud with your mouth and get it into your head. Just repeat it over and over. Both, left, right, left, right, both, left, right, left, right. All right, once you have that drilled into your head, now we're gonna go on to the next step, which is tapping the rhythm with our hands. Now it gets a little more tricky. Now, normally I would tap on my legs, but that's out of the camera, so I'm just gonna tap on my piano. So I want you to go along with me, okay? So we're gonna do both, left, right, left, right, 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 and keep drilling that until you have it in your kind of memory. All right, next step, we're gonna put both our thumbs on C. We're not gonna worry about any chords. We're gonna do this exact same thing. So we're just gonna, on C, do this. Both, left, right, left, right, both, Left, right, left, right. All right, do that, pause the video, repeat it a bunch of times, and then we're gonna do it through all the chords. So we're gonna start on our C chord, and we're gonna do both, left, right, left, right. Repeat it over and over and over. Then do the same thing with all the other chords, right? So go to your G chord, and do both, left, right, left, right. Repeat it over a billion times, do the same thing with your A minor chord and your F chord. And once you're done with all those steps, now we're finally going to move on to the final step of putting the entire chord progression together. So it's gonna look like this. Both, left, right, left, right, 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 and once you speed it up, it's gonna sound like this. Both, left, right, left, right, both, left, right, left, right, both, left, right, left, right, both, left, right, left, right. So it sounds pretty cool, but make sure you use the process so you're drilling it in good and it's not getting sloppy. All right, before I go on to the third and final muddy pattern, if you like this video and this very like detailed style of teaching, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell to turn on notifications. I wouldn't want you to miss out on any new videos I have coming out in the future, so pause the video, hit that subscribe now, and hit the bell. On to the final money pattern, the greatest showman. All right, I call this one the greatest showman because it was recently used 
in the popular movie, The Greatest Showman, in the song Million Dreams. You've probably heard it before. But full disclosure, I was using this pattern way before that movie came out, and I want my royalties. I want my royalties. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But seriously, this is a pattern that has been used time and time again for years and years and years by a ton of great piano players. All right, here's how it works. So we're at the piano, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chord that we play in our right hand, and instead of playing both notes at the same time, we're just gonna alternate between the two notes, bottom, top, bottom, top, like this. We do the same thing no matter what chord we're playing. So our G chord is gonna be alternating these two notes, right? Our A minor chord is gonna be alternating these two. And our F major chord is gonna be these two. So you play them hands together. You're gonna to play this pattern four times each for every note in your left hand. It's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, and then switch. One, two, three, four, switch, one, two, three, four, switch, one, two, three, four. So the whole thing's gonna sound like this. I close my eyes and I can see world is waiting up for me and you call my home no making fun of my singing voice <laughs> it's actually funny when people hear i can play piano they're like oh you can sing right I'm like nope actually that's a completely different skill set anyways 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 moving on like i said all these money patterns you can use for any of the chord progressions right so we can go to the dark side chord progressions and you know same thing Or we could do the road trip combined with the car ride, combined with octave stacking, and we can do this. So really when you combine all these separate chord progressions, octave stacking, and these variations, I mean you literally have hundreds and hundreds of things to work with. All right, now listen, I know I joke around a lot, I hope these are fun for you, but I wanna get a little bit serious right now because the biggest gap that people have, especially when they're learning piano off of YouTube, is, is, is they're taught what notes to play, but they're not taught how to practice and how to drill stuff in correctly. And this can be super, super detrimental to your playing. Because when you watch a video and they just show you the notes and they're like, good luck, bucko, and you just gotta figure it out yourself, there's a good chance you're gonna drill in bad habits and bad patterns, and that's why people have a lot of trouble when they're trying to get hands together, and when they're trying to speed stuff up from slow to fast. And that's why I'm so adamant about people really putting in the effort of learning with chunking and rhythms and the added note strategy and really learning things the correct way. Because without the how to practice, a lot of people get really frustrated and they give up and they think, oh, I just don't have a knack for music and they lose out on a lifetime of being able to share the gift of music with people. And I hate that. And that's why I'm so kind of adamant about learning this stuff the right way. And I don't want that path for you. So if you like this style of learning and you want more and you want really the fundamentals of this kind of stuff, I have a 100% free course. It's called Become a Piano Superhuman. No, it's not a free trial or anything like that. It really is 100% free. I'll put the link on the page. I'll put the link in the description. If you're interested, all you have to do is click the link and sign up. Thanks a lot for watching. Seriously, I really love making these videos for you guys. I can only hope that you love watching them as much as I love making them. So until next time, peace out and happy practicing.